computer. Now it's recording. So, hello. Okay. <laughs> hello. So, have, um, well, let's let's introduce ourselves, maybe for starters. Okay. No, uh, are we both on it? Is it possible to? So we have both faces on it. Well, I can see. I can see both of us. I see myself very small, and and you are big. Oh, now you're equal size for me. Are you? How did you do that? Here is speak of you. Yes, much better. <laughs> Less disconcerting that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's introduce ourselves. I'm Ingrid. I'm a visual artist and uh, illustrator and uh, drawing teacher and designer and graphic recorder in Denmark. And uh, here are some things that I've drawn. And I am now talking with, what's your name? Lou? <laughs> Lou, Lou Theodore. Lou Theodore, it's cool. yeah. yeah. I didn't know how to pronounce this. Yeah, so I'm, um, I'm based in the UK and I'm artist, illustrator, storyteller and I do a lot of my work um, actually on location, so draw and paint on location. And I met Ingrid online, we haven't actually met in person, only online. And um, we just found that we had a lot in common and have started having conversations. Yeah. I thought about we, we uh, my family and I talked about uh, maybe going to England <gasps> in summer. So yeah. it's about coming by. Perfect. We live and then we could draw together. Yeah, that would be so fun. That would be really fun. So you draw mostly on location. Yeah, not all, not always. Um, but probably about eighty percent of the time, and a lot of the illustration project work I do is based on drawing on location. So whether that's um, as an artist in residence, recording, I don't know, people using a facility or visiting it or going into um, a company and drawing factory workers and telling their story as well as the product story. So lo lots of it is on, on location, yeah. Or you do that as a job, you get paid by the company to draw the people there yeah well, yeah absolutely that's great <laughs> you have some of these drawings there um well i've got i've got one because i thought it was um because in ingrid and i've been talking about um having a confidence to draw on location whether that's uh I don't know whether that's a cafe or a museum or sitting out in a park and that sort of thing. And one of the most, um, I think one of the most interesting projects I did was for Brighton Hove Bus Company, which is my local bus company. They noticed that I was posting images up on Instagram of basically just sort of drawing passengers and day-to-day -day life on the buses. And they thought it was a really... Um, a kind of fun idea that the marketing department wanted to get behind. So um, I did a residency with them for a month, mm -hmm. which involved me sitting on all the bus routes. It's a, it's a huge kind of, it's a city, loads and loads of different bus routes, um, and drawing the passengers and um, some of the drivers and just, you know, some of the things that happened typically on a bus. Well, and was, was that was that your idea? You approached them and no, actually it was a joint thing. They they saw the images on Instagram and really liked them and said, um, why don't you come in and talk to us about what you do, um, the sorts of projects you'd be really interested in doing. Um, and let's see if there's some synergy between, you know, they wanted to increase their social media following. Um, and interact a bit more in a sort of slightly more personal way with the community using the buses. So um, I met with them a couple of times, we talked about different things and then decided on the, the residency would be a really fun thing to do. And um, so they publicised it 
said hey Lou is going to be drawing on these bus routes on these days you know go and join her draw in you know you know join in all that sort of thing and they also um I sort of ran a kind of a competition for that month that if I drew you and they posted it up on their Twitter or Facebook or Instagram feed and you spotted yourself you'd win like a month or six months free travel okay. so um it was such a fun project really really fun um now I've, I'll show you some of the drawings. I mean, obviously, over a period of a month, there's a lot of drawings. Um, but what was really amazing about it was, you know, I, I hadn't really, I did draw on the bus, but fairly discreetly before that. But obviously, they had posters up in the bus saying, "This is what's going to be happening." Photos of me. So it was very, very um, public you know and there would be some people who would be just looking out for me so they could join in and um there was nowhere to hide with it so if i had any kind of um self-consciousness about the drawing didn't go well or um you know it was a really it was a really good learning curve for me because it sort of built up that that confidence of doing it in public and um also, it was just amazing the, com the conversations that I had with people and how people really engaged with it as an activity, how they loved watching somebody draw, how they talk about how they used to draw as children, perhaps, and would like to again. Um, and then just some of the stories that people just tell you about their lives. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does, does it happen sometimes that people were put off by if something didn't turn out well and oh, okay um, or something that's that's what I'm scared about because sometimes a portrait uh, looks similar but it doesn't look good you know yeah and people see themselves in a certain way which is not necessarily how you see them um, there were a few well I guess there was a competition running and everybody knew that and everybody was quite keen to be drawn anybody who was sort of plugged into the social media because it was sort of great prizes uh so there was that sort of particularly with the we've got quite a big student population in brighton so they were all sort of like draw me draw me you know pick me um the older people there were some people who are well it doesn't actually it didn't matter really whether it's just on the bus or in a cafe I'd, sometimes people do spot me drawing them and if they if they look uncomfortable um i stop drawing and i make it very obvious that i've stopped drawing you know that i put my book down or put the pen away or um i might even talk to them and said oh i'm really sorry i was just you know i'm just drawing this is what i was doing you know um did people be in, were they insulted by it in any way not really no sometimes people laugh and go my nose isn't that big or um you know my you know I don't know whatever it is my hat doesn't look like that on my head you know but it was all very I don't know very light-hearted really if anybody said um that they didn't want it used in the project that was fine but obviously respected that and actually one of the um one of the criteria from the bus company was can you please do mainly side shots or back of people's heads not a kind of full face drawing um just in, in case anybody doesn't like that or it seems too intrusive so that's why all the kind of drawings were put up just sort of show little snippets of people and their clothing rather than a lot a lot of their face mm -hmm. um yeah shall i show you some yes please it sounds like an amazing project i would like oh, to do something like it was that was really brilliant so some of them as you'd expect, you're drawing on a busy, crowded bus. So, you know, some of them, the kind of lines are quite wonky. There are smears, there's all sorts of things. Um, some of them I coloured when I was on the bus. Some of them I didn't. Some of them are detailed. If somebody stuck around for a few stops, you know, if they didn't and they got off, they're, they're very sketchy. So, um, so here we go. That's kind, kind of slouching. But that's that's detailed. How long does it take you to do something like that? Oh, well, do you know, I got faster and faster. Really? 
it was really quite an amazing difference. It just showed me, well, actually, you, you're doing it every day. You get very used to the kind of crowded environment. And as a project, it just made me realise actually how quick it is to sharpen up your skills if you just show up and do it for a bit every day i have to do that it's like i'm, I'm like itching doing like oh, but, but look there's there's ones like this which was um just <clears throat> the bus driver and somebody sitting behind him it was a trainee bus driver and you can see there that that's you know that's a bit scrappy it's all smeared there i think oh. it's good yeah well it's, it is what it is isn't it it's a project of the environment and if it if it smears or if it's a bit bumpy i i love it even a bit more actually because that's that's the kind of reality of drawing there so there's a lot of people on phones i suddenly became aware of how many people are on the phone on the bus and then also how many people wear really dark clothing in winter yeah I noticed that also with the phone. When I'm sketching somewhere, it's like the standard. Yeah. There we go. Two ladies in the leopard getting ready for the snow. It was quite a snowy period. And, and you're doing the watercolour and everything on the bus. I usually try to make um, some watercolour notes. So I just use, uh, you know, like one of these, these kind of water pens. Yeah. yeah. A really tiny, tiny little palette. Mm. And I slosh some colour on. Um, just so that I remember it otherwise because people are trying to spot themselves so they're looking for the right coloured scarf or coat or whatever mm -hmm. and then sometimes I'd lay more down on afterwards um, sometimes not it was just so this one for instance so that's not so detailed that one was coloured as I went mm -hmm. just on the bus it wasn't so busy so I could do that this guy in his waterproof clothing with his little book whereas something like you don't take photos as a, a memory aid? No. No. Just trying to find one that's a bit more detailed. So this one... Sorry, there's a lot and they're not particularly well organised here. I've just realised that as I'm fanning through them. So this one, I did a bit more work on it afterwards to sort of add in her camouflage jacket and stuff. So I've got all the basic colours in. It was just, um, yeah, adding some more, more as I went. And this, it's just really fun things. Like you get kind of people in their hats and their big furry hoods and their headphones and stuff. This was, this was a little bit funny because this lady was um, on the bus reading a magazine. There's a, a local magazine called Viva. And they'd done an article in it about me doing the artist in residency so i was sitting behind her drawing her and she was reading the article about me and we had quite um <laughs> quite a good laugh about that later um let's have a look and what is happening with all the originals don't you make an ex exhibition with them oh um we were going to do an exhibition um for in may there's something called the brighton arts festival and we had an idea maybe of doing um, an exhibition there. But interestingly for me, um, what I couldn't, what I didn't publish and what I couldn't publish was uh, the stories that people told me when I was drawing. And so it's quite, quite often they'd want to, they, you know, they take a photo of the, whatever the, drawing or the picture that they could use it on their you know facebook page or whatever and then we'd have sort of longer conversations and that was that was just too much i mean it that wasn't the purpose of the project it was just kind of visual snapshots but i really really want to do something with those stories actually that were told mm -hmm. because um one of the one of the really shocking things for me was when i was drawing um at sort of certain times of day there are a lot of older people traveling and how positively they responded to it mm -hmm. as a as a project it was like you know wow i got drawn and um they, they were kind of unaware of it because in, in not all but a lot of them weren't you know plugged into the social media and 
how much they relished sort of being really, really seen. And a lot of them talked about how invisible mm. they are mm. or how visible they feel. Mm. And I think the most shocking thing, and I heard it practically every day with older people was, thank you for spending the time to talk to me. Um, this is probably the only full conversation I'll have today that isn't based on a transaction sort of going into a shop or a coffee shop or whatever um and that you know that it yeah that had quite a big effect on me you know that that sort of realization of how how invisible how in insignificant they felt and how lonely they are mm. um so and lots of those people of course really want to tell their story yeah, there was one lady um, I drew a few, on a few different occasions and she was telling me how she'd lived in Portugal for 25 years and just amazing different things about her life and really um, lovely things. And I said to her, oh, well, you know, can I, can I do something with the story? Is that all right? Can I? Yeah. And she was absolutely delighted. So it just, be, it'd be so nice to kind of burst the bubble of, um, you know, here's a lady wearing a gray coat, perhaps not very colorful, but look at her amazing life. Look at the things that she's done, she's seen, she's enjoyed. Um, yeah, and just, yeah, turn those assumptions on their head, really. It sounds like this would be, make an amazing book. Mm. I think it would. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I, th I think it would, because it's just such a, it's such a, it's like a microcosm, isn't it, of the society you live in, the people travelling on the bus. Are you, know, you still, are you still drawing on the bus, or? Always. Always? Yeah, because... Actually, I, I, so I started, I started drawing on the bus, so way before this project, because I was working uh, part-time in an office then. And I was forever moaning, moaning, moaning about how I didn't have enough creative time. Right? It was kind of like my regular moan. And I sort of thought to myself one day, well, actually it takes me 45 minutes to go to the office and 45 minutes to come home every day. Not every day, but I think it was doing two or three days, something like that. And actually, why, why don't I use that, that, um, that time creatively? There's got to be a better way of doing it rather than just scrolling through Facebook or whatever. Mm. So that's why I started um, drawing on the bus, just to see, actually, can I make this... Um, yeah, a creative practice and can something really positive come out of it? Mm. Um, and as I got more and more into it, I used to draw um, really, really small um, in a little, actually, let me, hold on, I will show you. There. you can tell it's all spontaneous not prepared earlier so I started making um, these little mini books because I didn't want to carry around a big sketchbook or anything like that so I started so out of A4 you've probably seen this but out of an A4 bit of paper yes yes you can right. just fold it and you make it into a little mini book uh -huh. So I started drawing in these, so they're really tiny, really easy to hold, just with the pen. And then obviously I got more into it, started posting them a little bit on Instagram. And um, amazing really, because just that, that sort of, um, that decision to look at that time differently as potential creative time, mm. led to a fantastic project that was paid for was loads and loads of fun and could lead to a book could lead to an exhibition could lead to all sorts of things but it um it really did uh focus me on how much time we spend consuming rather than creating and you see so many people just consume 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 on their phones the whole way not noticing anything that's happening on the bus mm. who's sitting next to them in front of them 
any conversations that are happening, um, what's happening outside of the bus, literally kind of it's like the world through, you know, the phone screen. Mm. Um, yeah, and you, you actually see that time and time in the drawings, just how many people are mm. on their phone. So, um, I'm not drawing all the time. I'm not, I don't have time on the bus. I'm, I'm living on the countryside and I go... I'm at home <laughs> and I go for walks with my dog and sometimes I took a sketchbook with me and, and thought, but it's all the only landscape here. And I think landscape is not that interesting to, to draw. Right, yeah. Yeah, pe people are interesting, aren't people they? People are interesting, yes. Uh, uh, I, had, um, I had a group one day of six form students. So they were between 16 and 18 years old. And they're from a local college and they all joined me there was a group of about I don't know seven or eight of them and they stayed with me on the bus because they'd been following the project with their art teacher oh and um we went round drawing and that was really great because they were asking all sorts of you know questions about, about do people mind if you draw them um what happens when it goes wrong mm. you know what what do you do um and actually, um, I just said, well, no, nothing. I just, if the arm is kind of wrong or whatever, I just draw another arm and I just, <laughs> yeah. that's all that happens. You know, it's just a bit of paper. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Or if it's sort of suddenly the bus sort of goes over a bump. And you, um, Do you like your drawings while you're draw drawing them? I don't think about it. You don't think about it? No, it's... um. It's like, I guess it's slightly, if I'm just drawing them for myself. So obviously for this, there was an, there was an outcome and the company expected a certain number of images a day. And that was the agreement. And that's, that's fine across a you know, variety of routes. Um, when I'm doing it myself, for just for myself, um, it's the, it's interesting actually, the process is more important to me than the end result. So it's the, the process of looking, seeing, being part of life, of what's happening. It's kind of slightly, uh, I think drawing to me is a bit like meditation. It just allows me to just sort of slow the mind, just focus on sort of a few different things. So you don't have any judgmental thoughts while you're drawing. That's amazing. Well, no, I do. No, I suppose I do. I might think, oh no, like her, that's ridiculous. Her head is so big compared to her body. Right. Yes, that'll flip it. But I, I, I don't really care that much. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to learn that really the, the hard way because uh, it, I, I found that so uh, in, inhibiting. Is this the word? The word, uh, the word that uh, as as soon as something goes wrong, I, thought, I can't draw. I can't draw. This is the proof. I can't draw. But I've learned to not listen to, to the, yeah. these thoughts and draw anyway. And then at the end, something nice might come out of it or something okay. Um, yeah, no, exactly. exactly. It's some of the kind of drawings that go really wrong, there, there's, there's always something in them, isn't there? There's always a little bit of it that you like or, I don't know, you learn something or... And it's, it's only one drawing and one bit of time and that's not a indicator that you'll never be able to draw mm. you know and I've, i think we all have days where sometimes um it, it definitely flows more easily than other times um i th but that's like anything isn't it i mean sometimes i can i can cook tea and be really happy and relaxed and la, la, la. it all goes okay and other times it's a disaster darling you know, it's just, it's just life, isn't it? But I think that, I think, um, have you, do you go on um, any of the urban sketches meetups? Uh, no, I do my own urban sketching sometimes. Yeah. Well, I guess it's, it's, it's much more difficult, isn't it? If you're out in the countryside, if you're sort of close to a city. I mean, there, there are thousands of groups now and you go out for a day and you, with a group of all sorts of people, 
you know you've got professional artists animators to you know somebody who hasn't drawn for 20 years maybe all sort well, right across the spectrum all ages everything yeah. and just go out and kind of follow a route and do drawings of buildings people that sort of thing we just hang out and chat and draw and what I've noticed in those, I, I used to find those a little bit intimidating, probably. I probably started doing them, gosh, a long time ago now, maybe 10, 12 years ago, something like that. And I noticed that quite, that often I, I would come out with stuff and none of it was any good, actually, you know, in terms of was it an accurate portrayal or was it in perspective? But there was something kind of nice about that. And as the day wore on and I kind of relaxed more, I just sort of say, oh, well, it's only the last hour, really. I might, you know, come up with something that I might put on Instagram. You know, the rest of it will be just kind of blobs and this and that. But it, the process was still really fun. And I got loads and loads out of just hanging out with other people who like to draw and just the sort of conversations and just looking looking at the city and different landmarks in a slightly different way so i think there's i think there is loads to be said about the process being as important as the outcome mm -hmm. and if you can kind of settle into that a little bit mm -hmm. and kind of release that whack, 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 judgments about that's wrong that's wrong that's wrong you know mm -hmm. i really it, had to learn that to to shut off the thoughts and do it anyway and uh, for some reason, it, it's easier if if I'm being paid for drawing. Oh, really? Or if if I know that somebody's expecting me to draw, then I, I think well, I can't just stop now. I have to go uh, through with it, and then some something comes out of it uh, in the end. Yeah. I, I draw sometimes at, at conferences and workshops and stuff like that. Mm. And it's not so much. Uh, drawing the people there it's more drawing what's what's being said and making a visual summary out of that and uh, many times I just have to improvise something and I think well that's not uh, any good but I have to and then something comes out of it and in the end it doesn't look that bad <laughs> yeah well I mean that's that's a whole that's a whole other way of recording everything isn't it yeah you know when you've got all that um that information you know from the speakers and you've got slides and you've got whatever whatever else you know that it's much more uh, drawing from Im imagination right. than drawing what you see and uh, I, I actually I love drawing what I see more but I had to learn the other thing also so now I'm doing both yeah you know I, I I don't think I find it so I think because I've drawn on location for so long I don't find it that easy to draw from imagination it's a it's a completely different thing it's it's like you have or I had to learn to uh, relate to, on formulas like I draw when I when I'm drawing a fast figure then it's like this Which yeah. is, or when I drew in, in the webinar the other day, it looks like this. It's not not beautiful, really. <laughs> I love it though. It's, I, I feel quite envious of that. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a kind of, um, there's just like an energy and a spontaneity to it. And it's not bogged down with detail. No, it's not. And it's not meant to be. Uh, uh, to be hung up it's like it emerged in the in the uh moment yeah, yeah. but I, I do love to draw people and i would like to do that more and that I, I don't really know how to uh i mean i, I just I, I could just go out to the village and, and and draw there but i think i should make it a habit mm. like declare myself the you could do a hundred, you could do a day thing. I'm going to draw one person a day for a hundred days, yeah. or thirty days, or whatever. Yeah. Somebody I don't know. Did, did how is it for you to draw from photos 
or from the screen? Mm, I I don't do it very much. Mm. Um, and I find it quite difficult to draw from photos or screen. I sometimes actually, uh, okay, so that's not entirely true because sometimes in the winter, you know, when the lights, when the kind of evening is so dark and for such a long time, I do watch films or television and put it on pause and I'll draw from there. Mm, I've done that too, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't find it very easy and I think that's, that's partly because I've got really, really appallingly bad eyesight. And I find it really difficult to differentiate um, tone from screen or from photographs. Mm -hmm. um, I find it much easier to sort of see the tone and the lines and the contours, um, particularly of people, um, from real life. But I think there's also much more energy if you draw from, from real life. If there's a photo, then it's not really necessary to draw or there's not... I don't know. There's something about doing stuff in the moment, life, that's that's good and energizing. Yeah, and I, I mean, I draw quite a lot this this time of year. Um, in the summer, I tend to sort of go and I'll go to, I don't know, the beach or the park or something and draw there. But it's just too cold and miserable at the moment, so um, I draw a lot in cafes at this time of year, and I really love that. Um, because again, quite often, it's so interesting, isn't it? People say to me, I have, I have gone away um, for sort of weekends by myself, just drawing, and people say, oh, isn't that so lonely? And I don't find drawing a very solitary activity um, because quite often people talk to me yeah. you know, about drawing and about how they'd like to draw or what pen am I using or what ink am I using or, you know, and actually, I. I had a day sort of going around Paris, just drawing, not, not the big sites, just hanging out in cafes, drawing just what was in front of me, you know. And I had loads of conversations there and it really, um, it really made me laugh because my French is, well, let's be generous and say it's poor. <laughs> but, and um, people say, oh no, you know, Parisians won't talk to you, they're very aloof. And I find, no, that's not true. Absolutely the opposite. I'd had just the same fun and conversations with people, you know. I, but I don't, um, I don't put any barriers around me. I'm very, um, because, I, because I'm used to drawing, I suppose I'm used to people looking. Yeah. I don't kind of hunch up or whatever or hide my work. Yeah. You know, and people say quite often, can I look through your sketchbook when working in a book? Yeah. You know. there, uh, now, now, now I get my sketchbook. You can keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to the uh, V&A last week and that was quite an interesting experience because I like to go, uh, sometimes I like to just go there and draw the artifacts. It's a huge museum, Victoria and Albert Museum in London. And um, I, I went and I was sort of drawing these sort of weird medieval artifacts, like re religious relics and all that sort of thing. And I had lots of conversations with people as I was sort of sitting there drawing. But I did, I did notice when I came out, there were a lot of art students who were drawing actually in a different part of the gallery. And I did notice that a lot of them were kind of sitting in a way and kind of quite closed in the way they were holding their books and, and, and it kind of did have a bit of a don't come near, don't look sort of atmosphere. So I guess you have to be open. Now I'm going to show you yeah. my only urban sketching experience. That was in Berlin and then an urban sketching group. Where was it Berlin? That was in Berlin, yes. Mm. So this is how it looks. These were the people who were sketching. Brilliant. And with watercolor, it looks like this. Love it. But it's very different from yours. It's, it's kind of like more sketchy. Yeah. 
Do you not think that we just, we all have our... Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. But you don't think we all have our own style? Yeah. And we, we all have our own... Um, it's like our own visual language and it's, yeah, I see people's work that's really, really um, bold and splashy and scratchy and I love it, but I know it's not, it's just, um, I, and I, I guess you could kind of imitate it, but it isn't what I've got to give naturally. Yeah. You know. And, and I'm always... I, I wish I, my my drawings would be a little more together, like these are. Yeah, I'm I'm envious That's of you. Quite, they're quite big, um, kind of big sweeps and seams and things. It's, that's a whole kind of other thing because when I you know when I was doing this and it's just one person. Yeah. That's kind well, of. Then, you know what happens when I draw on the bus? Then this happens. I start drawing. <laughs> the, the the building there and then the bus uh, drives and then I, the building is gone <laughs> <laughs> so there's an empty page or it happens that I just get it wrong like here somebody holding a baby and it just looks completely wrong but I don't you know it looks completely wrong does it no, it, you know, I, th I, some of the drawings I love the most that I see are not like, are not perfect drawings. They're not, um, they're not all in proportion. They're not all detailed that you can really feel the, the artists yeah. sort of mark making and their and art. And and uh, it is something that I've learned. If I if I don't try to get it right, then it gets much better. Like like these are also wrong, <laughs> but uh, I kind of embrace the wrongness, and then it uh, it feels better to draw. Exactly. I, d I don't know this whole thing because if you want the perfect representation, I often think, well, why why wouldn't I just take a photo then? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You know, in a drawing, you bring a bit of yourself to that scene, and it's this is how I saw it, and there's something really special about that. And it doesn't matter if it's not in proportion or accurate, I don't think. Mm. In fact, I love it more, way more, when it's not. Yeah, me too. But yeah. I, 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 I had to learn that. <laughs> That was all, not always like, like it. Because I don't, well, you're not, you're not taught, are you, to... Um, to embrace the wrongness. To value that expression. No, when, you know, when you're at school, it's always, you know, there's really, well, when, certainly when I was at school, there's really horrendously boring tasks like, you know, drawing this apple 20 times or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about it being realistic, it's being accurate. and the, but there's such a gulf between people who are very expressive, very successful illustrators. You know, that's that's not about the accuracy, is it? It's it's about their style, their view, their their sort of self-expression and how they bring that to a piece. You know, whether that's an apple or I don't know, a drawing of a square or whatever it is. I'm I'm now really inspired to go out and draw. I, I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> if I have time. But uh, how 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 much do you draw? You draw every day. Yeah, and it, it depends. What it depends what. It's just life, isn't it? What what you've got going on? But I will draw something every single day. Yeah, of course, and something for myself. So not just kind of work projects um I travel a lot by the bus with a bus so um that's a kind of easy kind of route there if I stop and have a coffee I don't look at my phone I always do something I, I've just become just just more aware of actually I 
for years I kind of bemoaned not having enough creative time and, and what a load of old rubbish that was it was just I was you know consuming rather than creating and there were always pockets of time yeah it's, it's a habit yeah. it is a I mean, I've started trying to draw a little bit on location in the iPad. Mm. And that's been a whole, <laughs> that continues to be a whole big learning experience. It's like learning something completely new because it's, it's one, I use it in one way if I'm in the studio. And quite often I will draw with pen on paper and then bring it in and colour it and work on it in the iPad. But I, yeah. I, I'm still not that happy with this kind of spontaneity of the line that I get can get with drawing on a screen. But make, I, I think that probably takes quite a while, quite a few hours to find that. Mm. And it's a great big thing to carry around. <laughs> it's just not like little something is it like a pen and a little book you can put in your pocket it's like oh no it needs its whole own handbag <laughs> but, but the advantage is that you have um, you don't have to carry pencils and uh, and watercolor and all this yeah no that is true yeah no that and you is have the undo button yeah i don't like that though i don't like it about it because i think i think some of my best drawings have happened because I've just had to keep going, keep working. Yeah. So I, if I'm drawing on location on the iPad, I purposely, I don't undo. Mm -hmm. Because then I kind of get to that sort of slightly, it just feels like I'm kind of airbrushing things. You know, the reality is, this is me drawing in a cafe, I'm going to make mistakes. And if it all, it's all too perfect, it's like, mm, loses something. Yeah, if I, if I want to do a, a good drawing, then I also have to draw on paper. But like for, for every day and, and work, and if it has to be fast and stuff, then I do use the iPad a lot. We should, we should have a whole other conversation just about yes. drawing. Yes, and I think we also should teach each other maybe <laughs> to draw. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? We could that do some like, neat things, yeah. yeah. It would be really good. I, I was sort of saying, trying to work out if I could um, do a drawing on the bus and could I draw and film at the same time? No, somebody would have to film, I think. Yeah, I, I have done I that with a tripod. Yeah, you can do that. But it would be fun to do it. It's fun, isn't it? It's fun to see somebody else draw and how they hold the pen and how they kind of, you know like some people draw very methodically other people sort of hop around all the time and it's really fun to see mm -hmm. mm. well now it's we, we've talked we, we talk <laughs> for 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> no problem talking about drawing <laughs> mm. okay well maybe should we do another one yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, it would be really fun to, to draw together. Yeah. But I don't know how we could do that. Then we have to look at the same thing. We can uh, a virtual bus tour or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we could, we could look at the same thing. Or we could just look at different things, I guess. We could both look at our individual windows and draw what we see outside. Mm -hmm yeah yeah oh. we can also draw each other we can <laughs> we definitely can we've already drawn me yeah we're on, on the wall here oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right then um, thank you for talking. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. It's 